Hi, let's install Image on a Synology NAS. Let's start by going to Image's homepage, which is I-M-M-I-C-H dot app. So image dot A-P-P. I don't know why I did those in such a weird order. Image dot app is where we're going. And then let's head to the docs. <clears throat> install and then Docker Compose, which is recommended. So that's a good thing for us. Okay, so then I'm just gonna go in here and then I'm gonna download two files, which is a docker-compose.yaml and an example.env file. Okay, I've got those two files downloaded. This is awesome, this is fantastic. And then I'm gonna continue to not follow any other instructions. I guess I could, I guess I can come down here, populate the env file with custom values, um, start the containers. Okay, yeah, I'm gonna ignore all of that because that's the kind of guy that I am. Okay, the next two things that I need, stop saying okay are container manager and text editor. So if you don't have those, you can go to package center, type in container manager, and then install. I will say, if you happen to have a volume on your Synology NAS that has an SSD or an NVMe, that is a great place to install container manager because it'll make these programs run quite a bit faster. Some of them, not a big deal. Something like image, you might see a pretty decent um, speed upgrade. The other program that you want is just text editor. So you can just type in text and text editor should be the first thing that pops up. And then you just hit install and the magic of installation happens. Okay, so let's pop into container manager. And then, oh, if, if it's not there for you, you can actually just click on these shapes up here and container manager should be somewhere in here. And if you always want it to be on your desktop, just drag it and it'll always be there. Sometimes it'll be there twice. I'm gonna remove that, okay. So in Container Manager, I'm gonna scoot this over because I'm gonna have to go to File Station soon. I'm gonna click Project Create. And I'm gonna call this Image-App for Path. Let's, let's work on the path. So I'm gonna click on File Station and then I'm in my Docker shared folder here, which should you should have if you install Container Manager. And then I'm gonna create a new folder and type in Image-App. Now in this folder is where I'm gonna put those two files that I just downloaded. So let me kill time by babbling until I can find those two files and then I have them. All right, so I'm gonna drag them in here, overwrite, and then I will have a .env file and a .yaml file. So docker compose.yaml and example.env. Yours probably don't have a parenthesis and number in there. So I'll change mine to look like what I imagine yours looks like. Okay. So the first thing I want to do is change, stop saying okay. So first thing I want to do is change the docker compose.yaml file. So I will just right click and hit open with text editor. I want to do one thing and that is I want to get rid of all of these volumes, which uh, basically what this is saying right now is, hey, I'm going to store all of these files somewhere else on your Synology NAS that's going to be pretty difficult to get to unless you're in command line. And since you probably don't want to mess with command line, and I don't really want to have to mess with the stuff in command line, I'm going to say, hey, instead of that, just put these folders where I want them to be. And in this case, that's going to be in this image folder, this image-app folder that we created. So I need a folder called PG data. So I can just copy that and make a new folder in here called PG data. And then I want another one called model dash cache. I'll copy that, make a new folder called model cache and then TS data. So I'll copy that, create a new folder. And now I have the three folders that I need from this YAML file. I will need to make one more, but that's a surprise for later. And now I can actually delete all of this. Don't want volumes. And then I just need to look for them here. So that first one was model-cache. I know you're staring at this one right here, but I'm gonna do this last, because I don't know why. So let me look for where that volume for model cache is. And that's gonna be under boop, 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 image machine learning. So under image machine learning, there is a section called volumes. And then you can see the model-cache. All I'm gonna do is put period forward slash in front of that. And period forward slash, it's basically shorthand for wherever I am, um, look for a model cache folder. That's where I'm gonna put things. So that's what this period stands for. And where I am is in reference to the file that we're editing. So in this case, it's this docker compose.yaml file, which is in this image app folder, right? I've got that docker compose file here. And then that model cache folders in that same folder. So that's what that period shorthand for. And then the other two that I need are PG data, which I think is a database thing and type sense data. So I just found type sense data. I'm just gonna period forward slash, it's there, here's the type sense, volumes, and then TS data. So I just put period forward slash and it's there. And then under 
database. Probably we're gonna find this PG data volume. A volume you are no longer. You are now a folder. Okay. Then I will hit file, save. Now we'll close out of here. And now I wanna edit this example.env. So if I right click, it won't let me edit it with text editor. So all I have to do is rename this to .txt. And I can just double click. And it's really nice. The gals and guys over at image have actually supplied us with pretty good instructions. So we can change the location where your uploaded files are stored. So when I dr drag and drop, drag and drop, drag and drop a picture into image, this is where it's gonna land. So in this case, it's using that shorthand, period forward slash library. So I'm gonna use that. And in here, I'm gonna create a folder called library. If you have a library somewhere else of photos that, let me, let me rephrase this. <laughs> if you have a different place that you want image to put photos, you can right click whatever location that is hit properties and under location, just copy that. Oh, I cancel. And then just replace this dot library. You might run into issues with permissions and stuff and I'm not really gonna get into that in this video. So I'm gonna keep this real simple and keep it in its folder that it's in now. Um, the other thing that I wanna create or uh, correct is here. It's asking me to change these things to, no. It's asking me, not things, let's not use the word things, environmental variables. That sounds right. It's asking me to change those to some random text. So I'm gonna type in some random text. I'm gonna undo this actually. I am going to just use numbers and letters for this example, because sometimes I'm afraid if I use special characters that it messes it up with the code and it sees things as other things. Um, not a big deal, I could fix that later if I wanted to, but for the sake of this, so this video moves on, I will use just numbers and letters, but a lot of them. Oh, I put commas in there, that's not good. Okay, a lot of them, a lot of different ones. Let's hit those letters on top and bottom. Okay, and that's all that I need to change here. So now I'll stop saying okay. All right, file, save, exit. And then I need to rename this to, this is just gonna want a .env file. So instead of example.env.txt, I will just type in .env. Okay, cool. Um, and if you're wondering if that's referenced, if I go into this Docker Compose YAML file, you'll see it all over here where it's looking for a .env file. So boop, 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 right here, env file, .env. So we'll find that. I'm gonna close out of here. Path, let's set the path to Docker, image app, select, use existing and Docker Compose YAML to create the project. Yes, let's use and Docker Compose YAML. And you'll see it'll just fill it in with everything that we just did, so I'll hit next. I am not gonna set up a web portal. Hit next, start the project once it is created, done. It's gonna pull all these files and extract them and execute them and everything it's gotta do. If you are on an SSD or NVMe, this process, I guess it'd be the same time as a spinning drive, but when the program has to launch and stuff, this is a big one. This is a lot bigger than any of the other videos that I've done and both subscribers to this channel might notice that, so. Expect this to take a bit longer than those ones. Image has a lot more going on than something like, um, than a Docker container like LinkedIn, for example. Okay, project image dash app was successfully built. Pretty good sign. Exit code zero, that's another good sign. I'll close. Okay, and I haven't done this in the previous ones, but if you click on this container tab here, you can see all the different containers that image is running. And what's great is that they actually named everything image. So you know that everything belongs to the image program. This is also where you would update image if you had to. <laughs> if there's an update available, you should get something saying update and a little button that you can click on. Just bear in mind with image, in the very top of their page, they have a little warning that basically says, this is under a lot of active development. So if you upgrade image, or if you download the app on your phone and upgrade that app, but your server isn't running the same version, so you don't upgrade your server, but you update your phone app or something like that, you could run into issues. So you might wanna familiarize yourself with how to run Docker, how to go through their documents, how to edit stuff before you start playing around with updating certain parts of image. Just a little heads up. So now we wanna access image and see if it's up and running. I'm gonna to go to project, double click image app, and then in the YAML configuration, I just kinda of want you to get an idea of how Docker stuff works. You're gonna see a section called ports. Images got a lot going on here. There might be more than one section that says ports, but a lot of these will only have one section that says ports, and we're just looking for the port number on the left because this is how we access image. <clears throat> Basically, everything, a lot. when you see a colon in a lot of these Docker Compose files, everything to the left is something that's gonna be 
a reference that you're concerned with. It's something on your machine, whereas whatever's to the right is in your Docker container's own file structure system. Um, so on the left, what this is saying is how I'm going to access this is whatever device I'm installed on, go there, and then I'm on port 2283. So in this case, I'm going to type in the IP address of my Synology NAS, which if you don't know your IP address, you can actually just come up here to widgets. And then under system health, which if you don't have, you can just click this plus sign and check system health. You will see your Synology NAS's IP address. So mine's under LAN 1. If you have multiple LANs, it might be a different one, but mine is just under this first one. So 192.168.1.20. I'll just use that as an example. So I'm in a web browser, I'm just going to type in 192.168.1.20 colon 2283, that first port number that was to the left of the colon. And hey, image is up. If it's not running for you, um, I would suggest, oh, don't say um, just give it a couple minutes, especially if you're on spinning hard drives, even though it might show up in the containers tab, even though it might show up in the containers tab as everything is green, that, that might mean that it's just going to take a minute to to uh, launch. So give it a little bit of time if that's the issue. If these are starting to turn red and gray, then you have a problem that I probably cannot help you with. Other things that you can check, make sure you're not typing HTTPS, because if you're doing HTTPS, it's not going to work. You will just get an error. And then if you are using a Synology firewall, it's also not going to work. So, I mean, it, it can work. All you have to do is go to your Synology firewall and make sure that you're allowing port 2283 to be accessed. And then the other thing is, you're not going to be able to access image from outside of your home, ne home network. So, <coughs> ooh, dramatic. Um, yeah, so just make sure you're on your home network when you're trying to do this which you probably are because you're messing around with your Synology NAS, right? Um, and there are ways to access it outside of your home network. I just don't think I'm going to get into it quite yet. But you've got it installed, so you can just go to getting started, create an admin email. So I'll just type in admin at image.com, and then the password is not going to just be admin. It's going to be something much more secure than that. And my name is image, and then sign up, and then just type in your email, which is probably not admin at image.com, and then your password, which is probably not just admin, and log in, and hey, we're in image. You want me to test it out? We can test it out. Let's put in a picture. You want a picture of Scorpion and Sub-Zero from Mortal Kombat? Let's go ahead and upload it. Upload success, refresh page to see your photos. Let's click refresh. Hey, all my photos are here, and here is Scorpion and Sub-Zero. And yes, it's the greatest moment of my life was seeing these two dogs.